Welcome to Dominate, where we discuss strength and conditioning and much more. All right, Clint, it's good to uh, sit down with you again. Last time we talked about biological leg springs and injuries and problems in the world of sports, team sports and individual sports. Since we last talked, there have been some new developments. Of course, we have the data from last year coming out that in the 2020 NFL preseason, there were 11 ACL tears before the season even started and 16 MCL tears. You've seen it in baseball, you're seeing it in basketball as well. One of the more pr uh, prominent figures in sports, LeBron James, came out and you sent me the tweet saying that he was blaming it on no rest, shortened off seasons. This is a guy on load management. I remember watching uh, old YouTube games of Michael Jordan at year 39 playing 82 games with the Washington Wizards, and he was effective. So prominent figures in sports are blaming this on load management or a lack of load management. What is it actually? Okay. I'm not saying load management might not be mm -hmm. uh, some sort of an issue. You know, mm -hmm. you know, human body gets tired, fatigued, things mm -hmm. happen. But the root of the problem is definitely not load problem. Mm -hmm. The root of the problem is training. Mm -hmm. um, training methods uh, that these athletes are using um, and what these tra current training methods or popular training methods are doing mm -hmm. is basically tightening, mm -hmm. rottening, Mm -hmm. mummifying mm -hmm. ligaments, tendons, fascia of the joints, mm -hmm. specifically ankle, knees, hips, which are responsible for Achilles tendon rupture, which is the strongest tendon in the human body and yeah. almost impossible to rupture, mm -hmm. which is rupturing at, academ at epidemic paces. That is an old man injury. That's mm -hmm. uh, what we call weakened warrior injury. Four-year-old mm -hmm. working all week and go play basketball or tennis with their buddies on the weekend <laughs> and then yeah. rupture the Achilles. That doesn't yeah. happen to, you know, superstar athletes, healthy, young athletes. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. We are, the athletes are not utilizing training methods to nurture these, what we call biological leg springs. Right. Nurture this, the spring components, elastic components. You have to think of it as elasticity. Mm -hmm. And you have to, as a strength coach, as a personal trainer or performance or whatever the name these guys call themselves nowadays, or female, is once you work from that principle, you'll do a better job for you. So that, to answer, LeBron James is, uh, mm -hmm. is not load management. It's actually, mm -hmm. it, and, the, and, and the biggest problem is it's never directly correlated because it's like a, 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 a like, it's like a toothache or mm -hmm. it's like a, what do you call it when you have a tooth? Run. Root canal. Yeah, like a, yeah. it's like a, a cavity. Like a, like a cavity yeah, yeah. Right? It happens slowly. Mm -hmm. Slowly, you know, these guys or girls, they start training from high school yeah. or not even before pre high school year after year. Sorry, you know, week after week, month, of month after month, year after year, these short range of motion mm -hmm. exercises, these loading in sh with short range of motion exercises, which is basically shortening these springs, getting them strong in a certain area, but forgetting the rest of the spring. Right. That is, I'm trying to kind of make it simple and so, yeah. every, you know, everyone can understand that yeah. is the problem. If you do not utilize the full range of motion of a spring, mm -hmm. yeah, you look at a young child, when, so just see them sitting down, they, they, you know, or even some cultures, they can squat, deep squat, no problem. Bare feet. N bare, bare feet, knees yeah. over the toes, mm -hmm. ankle joint, fully uh, dorsiflexed, uh, you have the, the knees uh, touching the hamstring, calves sitting in a full squat, no problem, no ache. So once you start getting away from that and loading half a, you know, what we call shortened, shortened ranges of motion, 
that's where we run into a lot of problems. I'm sorry for the long, no, sure. the long uh, answer, but that in a nutshell is mm -hmm. a problem. And that's why for us, our athletes, I don't care what sport you do, our athletes must train to full range of motion. And one of the common things is, oh, why do we have to do, why do we have to train into full range of motion? Mm -hmm. Oh, my sport doesn't require it. I don't care if your sport doesn't require it because not only is it gonna actually enhance your performance, but it's also gonna be an injury prevention mechanism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. healthier joints, right? right? For those block, block, what we call black swan moments where you least expect it, where you will end up on the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and let me just be clear, like, if you cannot fall, like, right, let, no, let me repeat that. If you cannot bend, can't fall. you can't fall. Mm -hmm. If you cannot bend, you can't fall. Take it from me, I know yeah. firsthand. <laughs> yeah. So you and I know there's a problem. The NFL now knows there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I assume owners are getting quite short and quite angry with the fact that their players aren't on the field as long as they believe they can be. So the NFL this year just put $4 million into medical research for, I guess, trying to get to the bottom of what this epidemic is. Now, they gave that money to the medical field to examine what's going on. What would you rather they do to address the issue? That's a very good question. That's a difficult question. Yeah, take your time. But the simple question is just give that money to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, the problem with that is that the medical community doesn't really understand strength and condition. Yeah. All right. And the problem is a lot of the therapeutic community, you know, rehab community doesn't understand strength and condition. Mm -hmm. So that is a problem. Like for me, my gym is a lab. I've been studying, researching this. And I have some suggestions, actually, who, could, who they can give that money to. But, yeah. you know, I've been studying this for a long time because I've seen the, raise, the, the rise in injuries and so on and so forth and, and understanding that this is a problem, major problem. And if you don't train athletes, um, if you don't really understand the loading and, you know, and loading explosively to full range of motion, how to train, you know, explosive power and th things like that, the medical community is going to have a little problem trying to understand it because right now every, they throw all this technology and so forth and shoes and whatever and it's not it's not helping. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a that's that's a tough one, but I think if they they kind of have to take a good look at like you know where athletes are coming from, how mm -hmm. athletes are being produced. What rate of injuries are, are these athletes coming from this certain area, this training mm -hmm. uh, center or gym or uh, performance center? Like how, what's going on there? And mm -hmm. then they can kind of say, OK, maybe this is what, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? How come your athletes don't receive these injuries? Yeah. So maybe that's a better way instead of just giving it to, to the research community or medical community. And a lot of times the problem I have with that is that they have alternative motives to yeah. come up with some type of product, some type of drug, some yeah. type of this and that as to, to make money off of it. When the problem is, and I'm not telling you I believe, mm -hmm. I know what the problem is, mm -hmm. is, is inappropriate training methods. Yeah. And uh, the, the whole balance uh, training community, the whole stability training community, and the whole you know, core training community, mm -hmm. you know, and not only that, but also the mummifying and taping, wrapping the joints is a problem. Yeah. Major problem. You know, I'm not saying, yeah, if you have a little strain, it's okay to wrap a joint, but that joint, when you wrap it, it's like a fashion statement nowadays, these football players. Yeah. It's like they come out all wrapped, look like mummies. But what you're doing to that joint is you are mummifying the joint. Mm -hmm. Because, and then you're disrupting the communication, yeah. cellular communications within that joint. Mm -hmm. You're limiting the range of motion of that joint. Yeah. And that is a big, big problem. Yeah. You're basically creating what we call linear robots. Yeah. Now that makes a lot of sense. I didn't actually plan to talk about this at all, but you brought up a good point. And I remember from personal experience, my first nationals, I was getting ready and my wrist was bothering me. And I couldn't, I couldn't snatch for the longest time, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember wrapping it. 
wrapping it with multiple layers of tape. And that had fixed the problem. I was able to compete. And then I got into a habit where I needed that tape. Mm -hmm. And then a month after on that same, that same side, I hurt my shoulder. I'm convinced to this day it's because of that. I never took that off. So that, that goes, for me, I can register that with what you're saying with personal experience there. Yeah, because your what happens? Your body is a natural. Your body is smart. The thing is, we think we know the body, but we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't know the body. The yeah. body is the body is an amazing machine, uh -huh. which will adapt to anything. So if you are taking the work from somewhere else, somewhere else is going. Somewhere else is going to overcompensate. Compensate, yeah. So when you're wrapping the joint, you're taking the work from those ligaments, tendons, tissues, cellular mechanisms to do its job. Yeah. And it's going to pass it off somewhere else. Yeah. And you're disrupting the communication all there. It's so com complicated. Mm -hmm. Like you have nine biarticular muscles in the lower leg, mm -hmm. right? That work in unison. Mm -hmm. Then you have uniarticular muscles, which for people, biarticular are basically muscles that cross over two, joint, two joints. Yep. That work in unison. Okay. Hamstrings, quads, rectus femoris, semitendinosis, gracilis, I can, gastrocnemius. I don't want to mm -hmm. give you an anatomy lecture, but basically... They work together. And when we start compartmentalizing them, mm -hmm. isolating them, tr trying to like, make them work alone, it's impossible. That's why if you go into hamstring, the bicep femoris is probably the most m muscle that's ruptured in, for hamstring injuries because they try to isolate that muscle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Bicep femoris from the semitendinosis and the, femi and the semimembranosis. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Big, uh, major, that's another epidemic in the, yep. in the football is uh, all these hamstring issues which are totally avoidable. And then they throw these isolation exercises, isolation exercises at it. That, that's clearly not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and you mentioned, like, if I remember conversations with you about um, buzzwords and, and stability work is, that, is, is really in that right now. And I remember a few months ago, a video went viral with uh, Zurich Henry. He was doing push-ups with his feet elevated on an exercise ball. His hands weren't even on a stable surface. They were on a band, and there were chains over his back. Um, what, what are the cons to that versus using a stable surface? And Zurich Henry's a freak of nature. I remember watching him at Alabama. He's always been trucking guys. He's always been running through guys. Listen, man. That is the problem. That is the crooks. Mm -hmm. That's the crooks of the problem. Mm -hmm. You have these God-given, talented guys. He's a, Derek Henry's a freak of nature. Mm -hmm. Okay? Period. Mm -hmm. So you give this guy these clown exercises, right? Yeah. And then you have millions and millions and millions and millions of kids who want to be Derek Henry mm -hmm. and think they're going to be Derek Henry by doing this stupid shit. <laughs> that is very... Upsetting. And then you have, so guys like Derrick Henry make the dumbest fucking strength coaches look smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. a joke. Yeah. That's the problem. That is the problem. And, hey, I, I got got by that. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I got got by that. I, got, I bought into that, um, those, uh, the stability. And so I wasn't, I didn't, but I, I started to, I did, it was from trial and error. Yeah. My guys start to get weak. The freaks of nature, they're gonna, they're, they, you, they might not be the, you might not get them to their potential, mm -hmm. but they're usually gonna be better than the rest. Yeah. But the guys who need that real work, for me, their performance dropped, they got weaker, they got slower, they, they were getting injured. Mm -hmm. And it took me about two to three years to say, nah, something's wrong because I'm collecting data. This was yeah. way back in my career, and this was before probably your guys like Paul Check, Peter Twist. All that kind of shit. So how do, you, how do you collect that data? What do you do to collect that data? What do you, the, how you collect that data is just paying attention. Okay. Like, that's why I like individual sports like weightlifting and track and field because the numbers don't lie. You pay attention. What's going on? Why are, if certain injuries are popping up in your gym, what are the exercises that are you doing to potentiate these exercises? Are these guys going back and looking at the data and saying, why are my athletes tearing their air sales? Why are my athletes rupturing their hamstrings. Why are my athletes carrying the fucking strongest tendon in the human body, which is the Achilles tendon? That's almost impossible to rupture. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, it's not a joke. It's fucking serious. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it drives me crazy. 
So you have to go back to the data and understand, okay, if they're, they're, they're and sorry, calm down, Clint. Sorry, calm down. You have to go back and check the data mm -hmm. and, and, and to see what's going on. Because they're, they're, and over the years, I've started to trace correlations. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest correlation is going back again. We're treating ligaments and tendons, which are elastic components. Mm -hmm. They should be, you have to treat them like elastic bands. Mm -hmm. Nurture that through your training methods. Mm -hmm. If anybody's listening here, that's the principle. Muscles are like tensors, right? Exo uh, they, help, they help transfer the energy, the mechanical energy, and so forth. I don't want to get complicated, but when you work within those parameters, you're going to produce healthier, safer, um, more injury resistant athletes. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Things that happen to Saquon Barkley, yeah. um, you know, you, uh, Kevin Durant, the list yeah. goes on, you know? And, and it's everybody, right? You mentioned Saquon, he's supposed to be coming back soon. J.K. Mm -hmm. Dobbins just tore his ACL as mm -hmm. well this offseason. Cam Akers did, but you've seen it in basketball, you've seen it in hockey mm -hmm. as well. So there are multiple things going on. There are different sports and so-called sports-specific work with all these different types of strength coaches. You have a hockey strength coach, you have a basketball-specific strength coach, you have a football-specific strength coach, but yet the injuries follow a, follow a common denominator, mm -hmm. right? So what do you say to parents that want to put themselves in, you know, sports-specific training or indoor seasons in, as opposed to strength training and neglecting that key work, especially when they're, when they're young. See, the thing is, I, I feel it for the parents because the parents don't know. Yeah. Unless the parents who actually come to me usually have a little bit of background yep. in sports and they have a little better idea. Yeah. Those are usually the parents of some of the best athletes uh -huh. I've had because their parents have some type of background or at a, some type of high level. So they, something's not making sense for them. Yep. Usually what happens when, I, you know, parent the athlete, it's not, they don't care about the injuries. They, they normally come to you because they want your athlete, they want the athlete to run faster, be more stronger, more powerful, and so yeah. on and so forth. But we, you have to care about the injury, so that's why we train, utilize and train in that manner to, and for me personally, being injured, which ruined my career, which I know I'd be at a world-class, you know, probably being an Olympian or, mm -hmm. you know, being a pro football player, it's always took a special place for me. So that question is very hard, but the one thing you have to pay attention to as a parent um, is how are you building your, your child's foundation? Mm -hmm. Ask the strength goal, how, how do you go about building foundation? How are you about building that foundation? What, what are you utilizing? Yeah. You know, what kind of activities? If they're, if they're squatting, okay, um, how are they squatting? You know, yeah. what's, what's your, what's your, what's your thoughts on about knees yeah. that going over the toes? Okay. Just hit on a beautiful thing. Yeah. That this single cue or, um, um, this single cue used by strength coaches, personal trainers, fitness enthusiasts, social media influ influencers, make sure your knees do not go over your toes, yeah. is probably the most single detrimental cue that's destroying thousands and thousands of athletes. Yeah. That single cue based on my research in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Because anywhere I start to dig and search for training history. For one of my players had nine ACL injuries on his team. Yeah. Nine on one team, one football team, plus MCL and some hamstring. When he showed me the program and the, and the, 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 um, the, the execution mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, the, the technical uh, information, same thing. Mm -hmm. When I researched Kevin Durant's, um, background because I, I was watching the game and it would piss me off. I saw him fall down that, that Raptors playoff game when he. I searched his background information. Yeah. Common denominator. Yeah. Most athletes, uh, Saquon Barkley, I watch some of his videos. Yeah. Powerful, strong, beautiful. Powerful, four hundred pounds. Powerful, yeah. That's like the dude is a monster. Yeah. I believe in moving load. 
Yeah. Very important for performance, very important for durability. But the one thing when I saw Saquon's uh, videos is that his basically knees are not going over his toes. Okay. His, his ankles are pretty much mummified. When you see that, there's no, he, he's box squatting like 600 pounds and there's no movement. The shin is not going over. Like, that's crazy weight. Yeah. Beautiful athlete. There's no movement. There's no flexion of the shin going over the toe. Yeah. Nor do, nor, no dorsiflexion. And that leaves them in a vulnerable position in game. And that leaves them in a vulnerable position. Because what happened is the spring, what we're talking about, the mm -hmm. Achilles tendon spring, mm -hmm. is strong in a certain range of motion. Mm -hmm. Then you ask that spring to habitually to go through its full range of motion that it, that it can or it's a that it can go to, because, yeah. but you're not asking it to go through its full range of motion, which it, it should and yeah. it can and it's accustomed to. You're taking through its full range of motion where, you're, where it's being training and loaded and so on and so forth. So what happens is, A, I don't want to get technical, but you're losing sacromeres, you're, you're losing those, um, that what we call the, that vital range and that other range gets pretty much dried up. So yep. I love to use the elastic band analogy because people can think. So that full range of motion is distorted, distorted. It gets dried up, mm -hmm. and then when you call upon it to go through its full excursion, it pops. Yep. There's a beautiful quote by, um, in, there's this book, uh, Strength and Power in Sport by Comey. Mm -hmm. A muscle Oh, sorry. A muscle may be taken through its full excursion. A muscle, a muscle must be taken through its full excursion, or a muscle must must sorry. A muscle must habitually be taken through its full excursion. Yeah. So a muscle must habitually be taken through its full excursion of its range of motion, or problems may occur. Yeah. And we're seeing that pro those problems right now. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So the 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 joint full range of motion, which we are humanly born with, must be trained as many, as much as possible. Yeah. Or you're going to lose this range of motion. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. And, and that's I, what's happening. I think the dumbest thing you can think of, it, like it, in terms of strength coaches that restrict the knee and don't allow it to go over the toe, and you're talking about, these guys are trying to talk to us about being sport specific. Now, is Saquon Barkley going to go up to the linebacker before he gets tackled and say, hold on, don't tackle me so that my knee doesn't go over my toe? No, right? So how is that training you to be sports specific? It's not. It's ironic, you know? It's, it doesn't make any sense. It, you're 100% correct. That's yeah. why, you know, a lot of times people come to the gym and they say, oh, I can squat 500 pounds. And when you see them squat, they're squatting yeah. quarter range. Yeah. Or they're squatting half range. They're not squatting rock bottom, uh -huh. right? And rock that and you need to be strong in the rock bottom. If, mm -hmm. if you don't, if you don't use uh, uh, the body is going to adapt to whatever range of motion it's used. Uh, that's how smart you are. It's mm -hmm. going to realize, OK, I don't need this range because I'm not training to it. I, I don't we're not loading it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to adapt to it. So it's yeah. going to get weaker. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. That's the big I see this all the time. Yeah. And. I think some counter I've gotten a lot is, uh, you know, because there are guys at Cal Strength Football that train with some of the similar principles mm -hmm. to us, right? And they say, well, if these training principles work, you see that Von Miller was, I, I didn't want to talk to you about this in person because mm -hmm. I want to save it for this. Mm -hmm. You said you had some for me here. So a lot of people tell, counter me and say, well, if Von Miller was using full range of motion for an uh, during a period of time, using power cleans, using the Olympic lifts, why did he still have his ankle injury? What do you say to that? What was going on there? Because you said you had a theory about him. Okay. I don't think Von Miller uh -huh. was utilizing okay. Cal, meth Cal strength methods okay. for a long period of time. Okay. So you're saying that the period of time... You're saying that the, the, his base and his foundation I, wasn't used, wasn't, wasn't proper. Yeah, I don't yeah. think his foundation was proper. Mm -hmm. And remember, these things, I don't know, like, I know Cal Strand, they know what they're doing mm -hmm. over there, and I know they're, you know, they're, they're, they produce some of the strongest athletes around, mm -hmm. and they train up to full range of motion. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that Von Miller's been training with Cal Strand 
for like a, a full long, period long period. I think it was just a few sessions here. If we should, I could be wrong. Okay. Because I'm sure Von Miller, I know that guy, I, I marveled about him because he, ha he has such mobility, such flex yeah. flexibility. Um, it's, in it's incredible. He could bend like yeah. amazing. And one of the things I noticed, he didn't rap a lot. Yeah. Now I've seen him rapping. I've seen some, I haven't been seen him rapping a lot, like before he was injured. Yeah. So that could have something to do with it as well. But I don't believe that he's been training on the Cal principles method for a long period of time for, for that kind of adaptation of the tissues and so on and so forth to, yeah. to set in properly. Yeah, and, and even before he got injured, I think well, nine or ten years an elite linebacker is crazy. Nobody usually makes it past. Yeah. Him. Nobody usually makes it that long. Right? Yeah. And then you're seeing other issues. Uh, well, other you see how sorry I didn't see how funny they jump on that shit. That's what when I mean, when right? when you have like hundreds of yeah. uh, people who are training with these horrible methods, right? It's just a lot of times these guys are just so fucking lazy. They don't want to do the work. Yeah. Sorry, and you know they just find an easy way, or they're just fucking dumb. Like, you yeah. tell me what it is. Like, yeah. you know, the anatomy books is right there. Like, open an anatomy book, read an anatomy book, understand how ligaments, tendons, and fascia and muscles work. Like, come on. Yeah. Stop being like a freaking um, uh, social media strength coach and yeah. do the research for yourself, and we can have an intelligent conversation. Fucking clowns. Yeah. Sorry. It just drives me. It's, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Do you think that... I knew um, John was going to get me going. <laughs> You, yeah. and, and then the other thing you see is some guys talk about overtraining. This principle of overtraining, do you find athletes aren't, do you think athletes are neglecting the adaptation process? Yes. Okay. Because when you, you have to get into a, to, to grow, you have to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And overtraining is a process of growing. So right? you think a lot of folks are convinced, convincing themselves that instead of working harder, they're working smarter? I, I agree. I see a lot, a lot. Okay. Right. Um, you have to. I'm not saying, hey, everybody needs rest. You, you have to rest. There has to be. A, uh, but uh, I don't. They're trying to blame the whole injury on overtraining. Nah, that's a cop out. It's mm -hmm. the training methods. It's, it's the the, the um, stability training, core training, the knee, the, the, the number one statement um, of making sure my knees don't go over my toes mm -hmm. is 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 a, a direct correlation in Direct correlation is not even my opinion. It's a fact of Achilles tendon, ACL, and hamstring issues, L period. Lower back as well. M monster issues. So that's what it is. It's not um, these athletes being fatigued and training too hard and or overtraining. It's improper training methods. Yeah. So I guess to kind of wrap it up, do you have confidence in the $4 million study that the NFL has put in? And do you, do you think that that's going <laughs> to find issues like knees going over the toe. Do you think there's enough? And, and, and before I want to step back, it's yeah, not, yeah. and it's not just like knees going over the toe. I know, yeah, yeah. And it's not just that, but it's also a rate of force, like how yeah. training to full range of motion explosively. Yeah. So, you know, squats are great, but they're yeah. slow. Mm -hmm. High speed games like football, basketball, that, that need, you need to be explosive. You need to be, be uh, as quick as possible. That's why I love Olympic weightlifting for these athletes because mm -hmm. you have to load that joint to full range of motion fast and explosively under load. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that shin flexed all, all the way over the toe, knees bent, uh, hamstrings touching the calves. That has to be done fast. That's why catching a clean, catching a snatch with load over your head is so important for a lot of these athletes in the, in, for injury prevention. Yep. And that's being neglected. So these slow exercises along with these short range of motion exercises is also a, a major factor in the communication problems that the that you have to the athlete has to be able to relax mm -hmm. and uh, and contract at the la at, at the last minute you know so if you go back to a lot of these uh hamstring injuries they they usually happen at what we call the, the you know the stance phase so mm -hmm. when you stand up you know you're moving fast but it, you have to contract fast hit mm -hmm. the ground that's where it usually tears mm -hmm. because we're doing too much of these slow exercises too short range of motion, right? Mm -hmm. I just had to go back there. So just not to, you, there has to be explosive exercises to full range of motion as well to make sure it's, you, you, you're working within that injury prevention or healthy air athlete. So it's not just like power cleans, power snatches. Mm -hmm. That's also uh, detrimental or half squats, quarter squats. 
you work the range of motion, but you got to work it. You stretch the tissue, but you got to stretch the tissue explosively as well. So this is a process. Mm -hmm. And you got to do it fast. And you got to do it fast. So do you notice a big difference? Let's say we're using a rate of force development, meters per second, and how fast the bar is moving. Do you notice a huge, how, what do you notice in a guy who can move the bar faster? How does that look? A guy who can move the bar fast and take very short breaks between sets, what does that translate to on the field? What is that football player? What, 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 is, what does Wayne Moore look like here, and how does that transfer to the field? It's basically, because you're, and that's why we, we have a, uh, you know, our volume days, pushing the yeah. pace. Yeah. That's the reason is that we're trying to mimic as, as yeah. uh, or make them train as hard as here, as heavy as here, because that helps with fatigue resistance. Mm -hmm. Fatigue resistance to specific muscles, yeah. joints, and so on and so forth. They're used to loading, they're used to loading fast, and they're used to loading loads anywhere from 75% and above. Mm -hmm. With minimal rest, that you're, you're literally building durable athletes that way, mm -hmm. right? So that's why technique is important to full range, load the full range, mm -hmm. right? Then you load the full range as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Making sense? Mm -hmm. And that athlete should be able to run it down your throat, three downs of football. Hell, every drive. all day, baby. Okay. All day. Mm -hmm. All day. All day. And you said, I'll go back to my earlier question, but I want to wrap it up with this because it's, uh, it's kind of all encompassing and, and a little forward looking. Do you think there needs to be a bit more of a revolving door between the strength community and the medical community? You see, uh, I, I talked to one of our coaches here, Alan Warner, and he wants to get to a point where he's, in, he's finished med medical school and prescribing um, this kind of stuff. Do you think there needs to be more of a revolving door between the strength community and the medical field to really take care of these athletes? A hundred percent. Because right now, uh, back in my day, there was this uh, beautiful conference that they used to have. It used to be called Swiss Society uh -huh. Weightlifting and Injury Specialist Symposium. That was one of the best things that ever happened. Um, or that one of the best uh, symposiums I used to go to because we, it was all about bridging the gap between okay. strength coaches. Uh, uh, chiropractors, sports scientists, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there has to be. And for me, it's always been a personal uh, thing of mine to build relationships with um, therapists, doctors, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. I've done that. I do that. Um, I took it on my own to do that because, A, you can get rid of the you can weed out the, the doctors or you, who don't understand the yeah. strength training. And plus, I learn. You know, we learn, we learn how to communicate so we can better take care of the athletes. So yeah, man, there's a, there's a big gap. Um, you have therapists trying to uh, train or tell uh, these athletes how to train and what exercise. And a lot, a lot of times these teams, these strength coaches are physiotherapists that know nothing about um, um, strength and conditioning. You have them doing all these isometric wall squats and so on and so forth, which yeah. is mummifying the joint shorten their tissues and so on and so forth. That, mm -hmm. That's the bi biggest problem. You know, I, you, that is a major problem. And the thing is that you're lo when you, the reason I keep hammering training to full range of motion is so important because you're losing tissue. You're mm -hmm. actually losing tissue. You're losing perfective um, tissue that needs to be nurtured and harnessed. You, you, you are actually, there's a thing called a wrapping effect, mm -hmm. right? And that wrapping effect is only nurtured when the, the hamstring and the calves touch. touch. Mm -hmm. That's actually a protective me mechanism that protects your knee. That's Hartman, what's his name? Hartman in 19, 1993, you know, that, there's a study there. Mm -hmm. It tells you it's so important for that. But if, you don't, if you're not training anybody, if you're just sitting in a lab or you're just, you're not, you don't see it take effect. But for me, this is my lab. I see it taking effect every day. The, the athletes yeah. with the healthier joints are the athletes who touch their hamstrings to their calves. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the wrapping, wrapping effect. We had a lady come in here the other day, jump, uh, train with us off season, volleyball player. Had jumper knee, jumper's knee pretty much most of her career. Yeah. Guess what? Fixed jumper it. knee's gone. Yeah. I had experienced athletes who trained me for a while, left, started having knee pains, came back, they're start, they, they, stop, they start pushing their knees over their toes, simple thing like that. 
knee pain's gone. Yeah. I'm not saying you, there's no there's a difference between knee pain, and there's a difference between you know creating an environment where you're gonna actually rupture your ACL, tear your MCL, rupture yeah. your Achilles tendon. Major major difference. Yeah. Everybody gets a little dinged up here and there and so on and so forth. You ease off the work and then you come back at it. But the key thing is why that's one of the biggest principles in our training is to train to full range of motion. It's an injury prevention mechanism to help the athletes have a long, healthy, nurturing career. Yeah. And too many careers are being cut short because of misinformation, social media likes. Yeah. Blah, blah, misinformation, blah. I think some people, instead of being open-minded, they just kind of go in with a thesis and a conclusion, and they just, like a horse with blinders on, neglecting anything else that doesn't fit into that narrative, Yes. and doesn't fit into the facts that they want to support their point. So I think if people just looked at the data objectively, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need four or five million dollars of a study to be done. Yo, it, to give me that four or five million dollars, I guarantee <laughs> you, yeah. I would clear up. Yeah. The, the the what's going on in the NFL right now, yeah. but it, the thing is, it, it the thing is, it it starts before the NFL, mm -hmm. right? It starts. It's a slow thing, like I was saying. It yeah. starts in high school, so they actually have to go back to high schools because these things don't wear their ugly heads. Actually, we're starting to see them now. These things don't wear their ugly heads like um, Achilles tendon tears and so on and so forth until like um, six, eight years down. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But here's a statistic that's gonna blow your mind. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years, there has been a 400% increase in youth injuries, 400% from, for the, with elbow and shoulders. Now check this out. In the last 10 years, there was a 500% increase mm -hmm. in ACL tears. Guess the ages. From, Age, six, to eight, from six, to, six to 18 years old. Yeah. Six to eight, six years old to 18, there's a 500% increase in ACL tears mm -hmm. and elbow and shoulder injuries. We're yeah. doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, definitely something to think about. Um, thank you for your time. That's all we got today. All right. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. I guess we'll call this part two. <laughs>